A record is designed to provide an efficient, easy to use way to hold a group of values. For example, you might use a record to hold a set of coordinates, bank account numbers, and balances. Because it holds a group of values, a record is commonly referred to as an aggregate type. However, the record is more than simply a means of grouping data because records are also have some of the capabilities of a class. In addition, a record has unique features that simplify its declaration and streamline access to its values. As a result, records make it much easier to work with groups of data. One of the benefits of records is the reduction of the effort required to create a class which primary purpose is to organize two or more values into a single unit. Although it is possible to do that by class, but doing so will need writing a number of lines of code for constructors, getter and setter methods, overriding one or more of the methods inherited from objects, and etc. By creating a data aggregate by using record, these elements are handled automatically for you, greatly simplifying your code. Another reason for the addition of the records is to enable a program to clearly indicate that the intended purpose of a class is to hold a grouping of data, rather than act as a full feature class. A record is narrowly focused, a specialized class. It is declared by use of the record context sensitive keyword. So record is a keyword only in the context of a record declaration. Before going to our example, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I want to ask you to subscribe my channel and also give me a like to encourage me making more videos. Thank you. Please notice that the record name is immediately followed by a comma separated list of parameter declarations called a component list. This list defines the data that the record will hold. Second, notice that the body is optional. This is made possible because the compiler will automatically provide the elements necessary to store the data, construct a record, create getter methods to access the data, and override to a string, equals, and hash methods inherited from object. As a result, for many uses of record, nobody is required because the record declaration itself fully defines the record. Here, the record name is employee, and it has two components, the string name and the integer ID number. It specifies no statement in its body, so its body is empty. As the names imply, such a record could be used to store the name and ID number of an employee. Given the employee declaration just shown, a number of elements are automatically created. First, private final field for name and ID number are declared as type string and integer respectively. Second, public read-only accessor methods like getter methods that have the same names and types as record components name and ID number are provided. Therefore, these getter methods are called name and ID number. In general, each record component will have a corresponding private final field and a read-only public getter method automatically created by the compiler. Another element created automatically by the compiler will be the record's canonical constructor. 
This constructor has a parameter list that contains the same elements in the same order as the component list in the record declaration. The values passed to the constructor are automatically assigned to the corresponding fields in the record. In a record, the canonical constructor takes the place of the default constructor used by a class. A record is instantiated by use of new just the way you create an instance of a class. After this declaration executes, the private field's name and ID number for employee will contain the values omit and 1000 respectively. A key point about a record is that its data is held in private final fields and only getter methods are provided. So the data that a record holds is immutable. In other words, once you can construct a record, its contents cannot be changed. However, if a record holds a reference to some object, you can make a change to that object. But you cannot change to what object the reference in the record refers. Thus, in Java terms, records are said to be shallowly immutable. Records are often used as elements in a list. For example, Before going to next example, please notice that a record cannot inherit another class. However, all records implicitly inherit java.lang.record, which specifies abstract overrides of the equals, hash code, and two string methods declared by object. Implicit implementations of these methods are automatically created based on the record declaration. A record type cannot be extended. Thus, all record declarations are considered final. Although a record cannot extend another class, it can implement one or more interfaces. With the exception of equals, you cannot use the names of methods defined by object as names for a record's components. Aside from the fields associated with a record's components, any other fields must be static. Finally, a record can be generic. If you want to know more about generic in Java, we have a complete tutorial on it, which I put the link on top of this video. You can define your own implementation of the canonical constructor. You might want to declare a record constructor for a number of reasons. For a record, there are two general types of constructors that you can explicitly create. Canonical and non-canonical. Although the canonical constructor has a specific predefined form, there are two ways that you can code your own implementation. First, you can explicitly declare the full form of canonical constructor. Second, you can use what is called a compact record constructor. Let's see an example with the full form. To define your own implementation of a canonical constructor, Simply do so as you would with any other constructor, specifying the record's name and its parameter list. It is important to emphasize that for the canonical constructor, the types and parameter names must be the same as those specified by the record declaration. This is because the parameter names are linked to the automatically created fields and accessor methods defined by the record declaration. So they must agree in both type and name. 
Furthermore, each component must be fully initialized upon completion of the constructor. The following restriction also apply. The constructor must be at least as accessible as its record declaration. So if the access method modifier for the record is public, the constructor must also be specified public. A constructor cannot be generic, and it cannot include a truth class. It also cannot invoke another constructor defined for the record. There is often an easier way to define constructor and it is use of a compact constructor. A compact record constructor is declared by specifying the name of the record, but without parameters. The compact constructor implicitly has parameters that are the same as the record's components, and its components are automatically assigned the values of the arguments passed to the constructor. Within the compact constructor, you can however alter one or more of the arguments prior to their value being assigned to the record. At the end of the compact constructor, the value of name is automatically assigned to its corresponding field. The value of the implicit ID number parameter is also assigned to its corresponding field at the end of the constructor. Because the parameters are implicitly assigned to their corresponding fields, when the constructor ends, there is no need to initialize the fields explicitly. Although the canonical constructor will often be sufficient, you can declare other constructors also. The key requirement is that any non-canonical constructor must first call another constructor in the record via this keyword. The constructor invoked will often be the canonical constructor. Doing this ultimately ensures that all fields are assigned. Declaring a non-canonical constructor enables you to create a special case records. For example, you might use such a constructor to create a record in which one or more of the components is given a default placeholder value. Please notice that the value default name is declared as a static field in employee. As we talked before, instance fields are not allowed in a record declaration, but a static field is legal. The second point is that this version of employee declares both a canonical constructor and a non-canonical constructor. This is perfectly valid. A record can define as many different constructors as it needs, as long as all adhere to the rules defined for record. The other point is that it is possible to create your own implementation of a getter method. When you declare the getter, the implicit version is no longer supplied. One possible reason you might want to declare your own getter is to throw an exception if some condition is not met. There is a very important requirement, however, that applies to creating your getters. They must adhere to the principle that a record is immutable, thus a getter that returns an altered value, so it should be avoided. If you do declare a getter implementation, there are a number of rules that apply. A getter must have the same return type and name as the component that it obtains. It must also be explicitly declared public. So default accessibility is not sufficient for a getter declaration in a record. 
no truth clause is allowed in a getter declaration. Finally, a getter must be non-generic and non-static. A better alternative to overriding a getter in cases in which you want to obtain a modified value of a component is to declare a separate method with its own name. For example, assuming the employee record, you might want to obtain only the last name from the name component. Using the standard getter to do, this would entail modifying the value obtained from the component. Doing this is a bad idea because it would violate the immutability aspect of the record. However, you could declare another method called last name that returns only the last name. Let's see an example. The last point here is that because a record is used to aggregate data, a common use of a record constructor is to verify the validity or applicability of an argument. For example, before constructing the record, the constructor may need to determine if a value is out of range in an improper format or otherwise unsuitable for use. If an invalid condition is found, the constructor could create a default or error instance. However, often it would be better for the constructor to throw an exception. This way, the user of the record would immediately be aware of the error and could take steps to correct it. Let's change our example in this way. 